Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting Him. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Hallelujah. You're welcome to this live transmitting broadcast as we bring forth the engrafted word of God. And today I'll be sharing with you the power of God's grace. The grace of God is an expression of God's goodness. The grace of God is a proof of God's kindness towards humanity. The grace of God is an indication of God's involvement towards the transformation of humanity. The grace of God is an expression of his power and his glory. When an individual received the revelation of the grace of God, it changed their approach towards life. I said when an individual received the revelation of the grace of God, it changed their approach towards life. The revelation of God's grace becomes an inspiration for a life of faith, victory, and dominion. I want to say that again. I said the revelation of the grace of God becomes an inspiration for a life of faith, a life of victory, and dominion. When an individual comes into the revelation of the grace of God, that will be the starting point of true transformation. We cannot truly be transformed or move to the next level when we're ignorant of the grace of God. Grace is an expression that God is at work in man. Grace is an expression that God is at work in man. When an individual receives the revelation of the grace of God, they move from a life of struggle to a life of dominion. When, when you come in contact with the grace of God, the grace of God is not weak. The, the grace of God does not make us do things that is not consistent with God's will. The grace of God empowers us to function in the direction of the will of God. I said the grace of God empowers us to function in the direction of the will of God. I, I can truly function in the direction of God's will if I'm ignorant of God's grace. And grace is the person of Jesus. Everything that God did, he did in Jesus. Everything that God did, he did in Jesus for the benefit of humanity. So when you come into the revelation of the grace of God, it will give you a right perspective towards life, towards ministry, towards relationship, towards business. You have this mentality and this understanding that the grace of God has become my advantage. It's my advantage over situations, over the storms of life, over the afflictions of life. So no matter what is trying to rise up against me, because I have the revelation of the grace of God, I will always rise above it because grace is God's platform for me to manifest his nature. Grace is God's platform for humanity to manifest his nature. So when a person receives the revelation of the grace of God, it breaks them free from every yoke, every form of bondage or situation that could keep them away from reaching their full potential. Because the revelation of God's grace is actually the foundation for a life of freedom. You know, there are people who are struggling with so many things. If they begin to receive the revelation that God loves them, that is an expression of His grace. That God loves me. You see, God didn't love me because I'm good. God loves me because of what He did in Jesus. I said, God did not love me because I'm a nice guy. 
or I'm a nice person. He loved me because of what he did in Jesus. What he did in Jesus was a proof of his love for me. So whenever God is dealing with me, he's not looking at me. He's looking at Jesus. He's looking at Jesus. And my responsibility is to live from the knowledge of what Jesus has done for me. And that is the finished work. My responsibility is to live from the revelation of what Jesus has done for me. And for me to live from that revelation, I need to understand the grace of God. Because the grace of God keeps you in the direction of the will of God. You, you can't truly enjoy God's will and manifest his will when you're ignorant of his grace. Because his grace comes to empower. His grace comes to inspire. His grace comes to strengthen. And his grace comes to enable you to achieve the dreams or the vision that a father has for you. So by his grace, we, we go forward, we, we move forward, and we keep going in the direction of his will. That was why the scripture said that the grace of God has appeared to all men. You see, if you're in this earth today, if you're on if you're in the earth today, the grace of God has come to you. And all we need to do to acknowledge that grace is to receive receive the lordship of Jesus is to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. When, when we receive Jesus into our life, it means we have opened the door to experiencing the grace of God. And with, with the knowledge of his grace, no situation will keep you away from reaching the full potential, uh, reaching your destination because you have the revelation of his grace, you know. We can be the city set on the hill if we fail to walk in the revelation of the grace of God. You can be the city set on the hill because the scripture said, By strength shall no man prevail. There is a limit to what your natural strength could do. There is a limit to what your professional skill could do. There is a limit to what your connections in the natural could do. But there is no limit to what you can do when you receive the revelation of the grace of God. Because the revelation of his grace actually equip you to live the God life. And this is what the, the deal is. The God life is the reason why Jesus came to die for us. The reason why Jesus came to die for us is that we should live the God life. It's not just the life in the Eden. It's life more than what Adam and Eve saw in the Eden. It is the God life. Life as the Father has it. That is a life God has called us to live, a life of dominion, a life where we can be superior. The fall of man did not reduce the standard of God. I said the fall of man did not reduce the standard of God, but the fall of man opened a door for a higher standard of God, which is the grace of God, where mercy prevails, where the love of God guides us into righteousness, where the love of God guides us into holiness, where the love of God guides us into purity, where the love of God guides us into dominion, where the love of God guides us into rest, where the love of God guides us into manifestation of of the power of God, where the love of God guides us into a life of strength, a life of power. You're watching this broadcast today. The Holy Ghost will have me say this to you. It's time to depend on the grace of God. It's time to say, Lord, I trust your grace. Lord, I trust your grace. Lord, I trust your grace. Your grace is my focus. Your grace is my thinking. God wants you to think from the grace realm. Come on. He wants you to think from the grace dimension. When you think from the grace dimension, you don't walk in condemnation. I want to say that again. If you think from the grace dimension, you don't walk in condemnation. When you think from the grace dimension, you don't struggle with sin and ungodliness and unrighteousness. Why? Because the grace exonerates you from such addiction, from such habit. Because you have the revelation of his grace, you are flowing in power. The key to the miraculous is to have the revelation of the grace of God. The key to the miraculous is to have the revelation of the grace of God because the revelation of his grace encourages holiness, encourages righteousness. A man who has the revelation of God's grace will not be sleeping around. You will not be having sex with people who are not your wife or who is not your wife or who is not your husband. You won't be doing that because grace encourages you to walk in holiness. Grace empowers you to function from the gift of righteousness. Grace does not end 
does sin. Grace exonerates you from sin. Grace will snatch you out of sin and bring you into a place of power and bring you into a place of liberty. When we have the revelation of his grace, nothing can be impossible to us. The revelation of his grace will change your thinking. It will change your approach towards life, approach towards things. Can I say this to you? The grace of God is available to you. I'm telling you, if you begin to see the grace of God as your source of inspiration, <coughs> sorry, as your source of inspiration, as your source of direction, nothing will be impossible to you. You're watching this broadcast today. Grace is available to you. The grace to overcome this sin for habit, this addiction, this struggle is available for you. The grace, I like to read this scripture. One minute, let me just take my water. I like to read this scripture in First Peter. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay, now in, in, in First Peter, I'd like to read chapter 2, verse 1. He said, in First Peter 2, verse 1, he said, Wherefore lay aside all the malice, lay aside all the malice, all the guile, all hypocrisy, envies, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere make of the word, that ye may grow thereby. We grow by grace. It's by the grace of God that we grow. Now let's look at Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to read from verse 2. In 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2, he said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. Grace and peace, they multiply. So we, we, we can come into the multiplication and the manifestation of the grace of God as we grow in the revelation of the word of God. As we grow in the revelation of God's word, we can multiply. We can see manifestation, visitation, supernatural encounter. We can go from one dimension to another because we have the revelation of the grace of God. The revelation of his grace becomes our inspiration for advancing our dreams and our vision. So the Holy Ghost will have me say this to you. Go for the word of God as you meditate on God's word. As you spend quality time reading the word of God, you start experiencing manifestations of grace. The grace of God will be made manifest in greater ways and you will see yourself living a life where you don't struggle with things, where things bow to you, where situation bows to you, where you take the lead in the right direction. The grace of God is in operation. I'm here to say to you, because we have the revelation of his grace, nothing can be impossible to our destiny. And God has not called into a life of defeat. God has called into a life of liberty. He has called into a life of power. Not in Galatians 5 verse 1. It says, stand in the liberty where which Christ has made us free. It was the grace of God that gave us that liberty, which is the person of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have liberty. We have liberty over sin. We have liberty over oppression, over satanic manipulation. If you function from the revelation of God's grace, by acknowledging his grace, by putting his grace to work. How do you put the grace of God to work? You put the grace of God to work when you start doing the word of God. You put the grace of God to work when you start doing the word of God. You put the grace of God to work when you know that it is not by mind, it's not by power, but by the Spirit says the Lord of hosts. You put the grace of God to work when you put God first in everything you do. It means you're putting His grace to work. You put the grace of God to work when you trust on the ministry, when you trust in the ministry of the Holy Spirit for Him to lead you, for Him to direct you, for Him to show you what to do. You put the grace of God to work when you start living by faith. I'm telling you, you put the grace of God to work when you start living by faith. When you choose to trust God. When you choose to believe God's support. You refuse to give up on God, give up on His will, but you chose His word above the flesh. When you choose the word of God, you win. Can I say this to you? The knowledge of His grace is the foundation for supernatural living. You can live supernaturally when you lack the revelation of the grace of 
God. You can't live supernaturally. You can manifest the, the anointing, the power. All of those things are connected to the force of grace. The anointing, the power, the glory, they are all the manifestation of the grace of God. When we talk about the manifold grace of God, when we talk about the manifold grace of God, there are dimensions of the grace of God. As we receive the revelation of His grace, we're going to flow in power. We're going to flow in the things of the Spirit. We're going to have dominion. We're going to walk in the anointing so strong that people will say, My God, where did they get this from? Because they have acknowledged the grace of God. Because they depend on the grace of God. Because they choose to do things according to the knowledge of His grace. Often I say to people that grace will empower you to live right. Grace will empower you to function right. Grace will empower you to walk in holiness. Grace will empower you to stay away from sin and ungodliness. Grace will empower you to have favor with people everywhere you go. When God's grace is in operation, there is no limit to what you can do. When God's grace is in operation, there is no limit to where you can go. The manifestation of his grace is the proof of his glory. Come on. The manifestation of his grace is the proof of his glory. You're watching this broadcast right now. The grace of God is available for you. Available for you to come out of this trauma. Available for you to come out of this depression. If you can say, Jesus, I give it over to you. Watch manifestation break out in greater ways. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace. May the grace of God be in operation in your life. I prophesy to you. The manifestation of his grace will take you out of a life of shame, out of a life of humility, uh, or of being subjected to pain, will increase you to walk in humility. Because the grace of God is in operation. No limit to what you can do. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The manifestation of God's grace is the foundation for a life of power. You, you, you can't live in power uh, except you have the manifestation of His grace. Now, I want to read this scripture to you in, in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 he said for the grace of God that bringeth salvation that bringeth salvation my God it is the grace of God that bringeth salvation what brings salvation is grace it is the grace of God that bringeth salvation that bringeth deliverance that brings healing it is the grace of God hallelujah oh my God because I know his grace is at work in me nothing can be impossible to my vision nothing can be impossible to my partners because the grace of God is available to us. Look at what the scripture says. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. All men. Let me say this to you. All men includes you watching this broadcast. The grace of God has appeared. But how many people have the revelation of how the grace works? That is why I'm teaching you right now. That when you want to put the grace of God to work, number one, you have to depend on God. Depend on God for everything. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. That is an expression of God's grace. You trust in the Lord with all your heart. You don't lean on your own understanding because you trust in the Lord. How do you put God's grace to work? When you choose to allow the knowledge of his will to take the lead in your life. When you choose to allow the knowledge of his will to take the lead in your life, you're putting the grace of God to work. Hallelujah. One of the ways you put the grace of God to work is when we submit to the word of God. Oh my God. When you say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. What are you trying to say? You are putting grace to work. You are putting the grace of God to work. One of the ways we see the manifestation of God's grace is when we choose to listen to the Holy Spirit. He leads us. That was why the psalmist said, he lead me beside the still water. 
He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. One man who understood the revelation of God's grace, his name was called David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That is how people who have received the revelation of God's grace will speak. He made me to lie down in green pasture. He restored my soul. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with oil. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me. He said, my cup will run over because you understood the grace of God. Then his confession has changed. Then his attitude has changed. Now he knows the Lord is my shepherd. Ha! He will help me pay off the bills. Oh my God. He will help me finish the project. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help come from the Lord. These are people in the old covenants that tapped into the revelation of the grace of God. They saw that the grace was everything. He taught my hands to war. He taught me to live through walls. Oh my God. He has the revelation of the grace of God. Frank, can I say this to you? Acknowledging God's grace is the starting point of a life of peace, a life of rest, a life of dominion, a life of power. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say to you, God's grace is in your favor. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again and the Holy Ghost is going to help you from this day forward. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. When you subscribe, you're opportunity to watch multiple teaching videos, you know, and your life will remain the same. So just go to Faith Man Teaching on YouTube and subscribe and expect things to happen. Hallelujah on YouTube. Now, watch me also on finishworktv.com. When you're watching it there, you're opportunity to watch multiple uh, broadcasts who have their video on demand that you can watch that could change your life. So I want to encourage you to stay connected to finish work. TV.com. I'd like you today to also consider partnering with this ministry. Through partnership, I continue to take this message of grace to more people around the world. So you can partner with us by going to finishworktv.com and slash giving. Finishworktv.com and slash giving. You can give from there. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon.